All right. Welcome everyone to another edition of our social media help desk. I am your host this afternoon, Tiffany Lundberg. Uh, joining me is Angie Smith. She is our senior web designer and okay. Kason Martin. She is a content editor like myself. Uh, I'm really excited to be hosting. This is the first time and I noticed, I've done this one other time, I went back to look so I knew what I was doing and I noticed that I'm wearing the exact well, so, uh, go figure. Lucky dress, it's right? Funny. Yeah, I guess. It's your talking dress. I'm going to wear it every time now. <laughs> All right. So other than my wardrobe, uh, we have some other great things to talk about, some more important things. Um, we're going to be talking about keywords and if they're important or how important they are very important, just how important they are for our website content. Um, Kason's going to tell us some uh, social media info in the news. We have news about Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. And then I'm going to go over that little blue check mark that you see on Facebook and Instagram, uh, the verification badge. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that and how you can get that for your business. So I think we're going to start with the news. Uh, hey. Kason, take it away. Okay, so um, I'm going to start with Facebook. So as you all know, um, when you use Facebook, there's also that feature that is called Facebook Messenger. And, you know, it's really important not only just to communicate with people you haven't talked to in a while, but also important for businesses. And so um, the biggest thing that happened was uh, Facebook changed it to where if you um, don't already have Facebook Messenger and you want to get it as an app, um, you can't actually just, you know, sign in, get the app by yourself, um, you know, just on its own. You have to have an account on Facebook in order to do it. So, um, so that's why it's really hard. I mean, for just in general for um, businesses or just people that want to do a standalone. Right, because it's know. just another account that you have to create, so. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, if you already have the uh, Facebook Messenger account without a Facebook account, you're fine. It's just for future um, users that want. So. And, and again, it's important because it's an important business tool. It's mm -hmm. a way that people reach out to other businesses in a way that people will contact you because a lot of people will look up businesses on Facebook or right. on some kind of social media platform. So again, an important business tool. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there's some news about YouTube Studio as well. YouTube. Oh, oh no. I, was, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> YouTube Studio. Um, well, for YouTube, which is... Um, so something they have is their copyright claims. Apparently it was really difficult at first to kind of you know, figure out what happens when someone um, claims copyright, but now they've kind of made it simpler for all of the um, creators on YouTube um, to be able to see um, you know, who sent the copy out, or copyright notice, um, also which videos were removed, and they also um, give you tips and options for how you can resolve the action, so then that way you can get your video back up and it provides a simpler way. <laughs> Giving you more information about right. your videos is yeah. important. Uh, news about Twitter as well. Yes, okay, so Twitter. So I don't know if you guys already um, know how it works or not, but there's Twitter lists and Twitter topics, which are two separate things. Um, the Twitter list is a feed of um, all the people you want to keep up with um, on a day-to-day -day basis, um, specifically on a given topic, versus the Twitter topics is um, you, you would follow that topic. It could be, you know, some current event or, you know, a show or something like that, and you can see all the relevant content um, that goes along with that topic and um, all the things that people are talking about and it just makes it a lot easier. But anyways, in regards to that, um, Twitter just made, is planning on making improvements um, in the new year to make it easier for people to find those topics and um, just kind of making it more personalized to you. So um, they'll make re recommendations on hashtags to follow and maybe other accounts that you'd like to follow as well. And um, they'll allow you to um, have preview elements for topics and so you'll be able to kind of see insights on them before following them, so, which makes it a little bit easier and nice because you're like, as a business, you might want to follow a certain topic, but you just don't know if it's going to be, 
you know, relevant or it's going to get you enough traffic or whatever it is, or even how much reach you can get also. Yeah, it's a great way to see other uh, businesses that are relevant to your business and yeah. um, that you kind of expand your wings on yeah. Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, Angie is going to talk about the importance of keywords um, when putting that into your website content. Again, I mentioned she is our senior web designer, so you know all about this. Yeah. So not only is SEO really important for your website, but keywords are probably the most important thing, um, especially when you're writing the copy for your website, as well as the blogs that you post for your website. Um, if you're not familiar what a keyword is, a keyword is a word or phrase that you use to type into Google to search for what you're looking for. So it's really in your best interest to really find your audience and figure out how they're searching for your type of product or business or service so that you can cater your copy and all of your information directly to them. And I know in our um, content strategies, we create uh, or we, we perform a keyword um, analysis so that we do all this work so that we're writing all of that copy so that it's easier for people to find um, you know, organically. This is the, the whole key of keywords is <laughs> I like keywords, that. Keywords, keywords. The keywords. The point of keywords <laughs> is to be done organically through Google. So you're not paid. It's it's the, the free that's the most free way to to get your website found on Google. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other I mean it's very basic, it's very simple, but do your research, find out what your audience is calling things in your industry, what your products like you know, if you are a company that sells boots, do they say boots? Do they call them shoes? Do they call them sneakers? Do they call them outerwear? Like, really do your research and figure out what your audience is calling your product or your service and really stick with it. And then follow through with that um, into your blog post and any of the content that you put out there that's not only for your website, but things that are, you know, constantly getting updated on your website to help with that Google search. Right, so you can be a great writer. You can have right. a great copywriter. Um, and they can write a wonderful story and you think this is going to do great because right. it's so interesting but then what happens if you don't put those words in right that you you may not you may be on like the fourth page of Google if someone's typing how do I um, let you know what these all of these <laughs> articles that we're reading right now are blog posts on our website they are so for this blog that I am we we're talking about it's our keywords really important for website content so if I'm not including any of those words within this blog we're People are probably not finding this blog, right? So yeah. it's in your best interest to include all those keywords, even in the title of your blog post as well. And, and you like to start uh, with the titles, which I've learned um, over the past few months. You like to start with those keywords. Yes, definitely. They're very important. Yes. Is there a certain amount of times would you say that you should be using those keywords, like an average amount, um, or just? Probably about not, three times. At least. At least three times throughout. I mean, you don't want to do overkill, but you definitely want it mentioned um, a couple times throughout the article. Okay. And there are multiple different keywords that you can <laughs> filter throughout your, throughout your blog and throughout all the content on your website. And when we're talking about content on the website and the blog, mm -hmm. it, you still want to make it seem like it's conversational. Right. You don't want to just throw those keywords right. in there. Right. You want to find places, maybe write it first, and then find places that those keywords would fit. Correct. So it still seems like it's a complete an entire piece, a complete entire story, but people right. are, are still able to search and, and find what they're looking for. Right. So that's why it's really good to be aware of it before you start writing a lot of your information. So you kind of can write around the keywords. That's, that's some really great information, some great tips. Our final subject that we're going to talk about is our the verified badge, which is on um, Facebook and Instagram. So um, this is this is going to be my subject. <laughs> um, so if you're not familiar with it, there are those little like blue check marks. You know, you see a lot of famous people like Kim Kardashian, for right. example. Of course, she's got the blue check mark, right? <laughs> but it's just a badge. It's just a way that people know that your business is the real deal like you are legit because you have to go through a process in which Facebook then verifies you and says yes this person is a legitimate business so Facebook and Instagram both have them but Facebook is a little more complicated than Instagram mm -hmm. uh, the process itself is so on Facebook you have to actually fill out a form and so there's a series of questions on that form and of course, um, they're going to ask you, you know, about what kind of page it is, and then they're going to ask you if you comply with all their guidelines. 
So some of their guidelines include things like you have to have a cover photo, mm -hmm. you have to have a profile picture, your name has to be compliant um, with those guidelines. Um, so once you start uh, filling out that form and you've completed that, then there is a whole nother step. <laughs> they also require an official document in order to do your request. Um, so if your account represents a person, it includes um, some kind of government issued ID that shows your name and date of birth, so like a driver's license or a passport. So it, this is not just like a simple, easy, like this process is gonna take me 15 minutes. You have to have all these things. Um, something else to keep in mind, if your account represents something other than a person, uh, you have to provide a document with an official seal or watermark on it of your organization. So that can be something like your organization's phone or utility bill, um, or a certificate of formation or articles of incorporation. So it's, it's kind of a lengthy <laughs> process. Um, you must also then fill out the essay portion, I like to Ooh. call. You know, like you got to the end of the multiple choice test right. in school and then there's the essay. <laughs> yep, so you have to fill Ooh. out some additional information on why your account should be verified. And again, after you go through that whole process, you have to keep in mind that um, they don't have to approve you. Right. So, Ooh. but it's better to try, right? right? Because yeah. it really, um, I think is beneficial to businesses to show that, again, you're verified, that you've gone through this entire process, especially if people know about the process. Um, it shows that you are a legit business. Instagram, a uh, little bit easier. Okay. So <laughs> you go into your Instagram account, you hit the little gear icon under the settings, and then you select request verification. Uh, again, you have to fill out your username and your full name. Um, you have to upload a picture of a government issued ID, but then that's it, you submit it. So it's, it's a little bit simpler, um, but again, they're both just, they're really important um, for businesses uh, to show, I don't know how many times I'm gonna say it, that you're legit, <laughs> that you're the real deal. And not to say that if somebody doesn't have it, they're not, but it's just a little extra. Oh, for you. And they can take yeah. as long as they want to verify you. Like, you won't, you won't know. It could take it, a day, well, it could take two weeks, it, you have no it, idea. Exactly. Okay. So it's, it's a waiting process. But again, like you said, you, you don't know the answer. It's worth it. Yeah, it is you, worth yeah. it. <laughs> but are there other factors, too, that could maybe sway them in a, another way? I, I don't know. I'm sure there is. I guess if you don't follow the instructions correctly or if there's some kind of conflict, again, you have to through and follow all of Facebook's guidelines so yeah. maybe you think you're in compliance with something right. and you're not um, so yeah really sit down and make sure that you have all the correct information and everything you need do do a little research um, again <laughs> we have a blog on it and uh, do a little research and make sure you have everything you need and that it's correct before you go ahead and, and submit and go through that process yeah I think that's good advice all yeah. right well I hope that everyone has learned something Thank you again for joining us for another edition of our social media help desk. We are here every Tuesday at 1230 Pacific time and uh, you can follow us on our YouTube channel as well. Bye. Bye.